Hello YouTube, it's Jim again. Welcome back to the channel. I'll be turning a live edge bowl today from Sisu or Indian Rosewood and it will be turned green only about a month after the tree was cut and this one was a gift for the friend that actually gave me the logs. So this was pretty special both for me and for my friend. As is my preferred technique, I start on the corner to bring it into balance and get it round at the same time. And it's cutting really, really nicely just because the wood is quite wet and it just kind of disappears off of the chisel. You can see some really nice figure in the bottom of this bowl. This is a crotch piece from a couple of branches higher up in the tree. And I picked this blank and it's partner specifically because I knew that it was going to make a couple of really nice bowls as a gift from my friend. Taking a break here, looking at the height of the bowl and seeing that I, it's not going to be very tall, so I'm trying to decide whether to use a tenon or a recess to hold it when I flip it around. And I end up going with a recess since the heartwood is so much prettier than the sapwood. And I wanted to keep as much of that as possible. And the recess would allow me to do that. So I'm getting really close to the final shape of the bowl. I'm just going to work a little bit right near the foot and where it blends to the rest of the shape so that it's a nice smooth curve. And then I'll be ready to move on to hollowing. Here I'm just using my negative rake scraper from Carter & Son Tools really helps to remove some of the tool marks and make the sanding go a little bit easier. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video. I do something pretty special with a part of the log that's normally not used when making bowls and really made for a spectacular result for the whole project. As you can see here and from the opening scene of the video, I had to shim the faceplate just a little bit to get it to sit level. It wasn't really that big of a deal. Still had I had eight screws holding it in, so I wasn't worried that those shims were going to be a problem, and it turned out just fine. Thank you. 
I was going for really thin walls on this because I knew with the degree of moisture in here it was really going to distort quite a bit and if I left them too thick they would crack so um, I was shooting for about a quarter of an inch and I almost went too thin here so <laughs> I had to stop uh, working on the upper part and move on. You've seen some of my recent videos with some crack issues. The goal here was to get this whole bowl done in a day and I was able to do that actually in just a couple of hours since it was small and that really helped keep the whole thing together and keep the drying process very quick and even. You can hear the sound of the tool on the wood here. It's pretty high pitch, and that means the walls are pretty thin. And I'm getting pretty close to the bottom, so we're almost done here. And it's looking awesome. So I got the sanding done off camera and I'm just using some alcohol here to clear out the pores. And you can really see how spectacular the grain is here in this piece of wood. I'm going to be using some Danish oil to finish this bowl. And I do that off camera, but uh, the last thing was to figure out what to do with the piece of the log that I had to take out before I made this bowl. So this bowl is from one half of a log that I cut. And when you do that, you need to cut out what's known as the pith, or the very center of the tree. That wood is from when the tree was really young, and it tends to crack very quickly, and it tends to be a little bit softer. So you want to get rid of that when you're making a bowl. So the pith piece that I cut out was about an inch thick, maybe three quarters of an inch, and the grain was just absolutely gorgeous, and I didn't want to throw it away or turn it into pen blanks or something like that. So I decided to just uh, use it as is and sanded it up to make it as a display platform for the bowls or just as a charcuterie board. Uh, I used a Danish oil finish on it as well. And as you can see, it just is an amazing little piece of wood. <laughs> 